It's Tuesday, October 27th, and this is now on HNN. There was a rude awakening. Fire rips through a Makiki home, sending smoke billowing into the air. There's been problems here before. Holding on for their life. A suspect has been arrested in a Wahiwa hit and run that killed an elderly man. The numbers ratio-wise are going to be extremely low. Lanai stay-at-home order goes into effect amid a growing COVID-19 outbreak. To make parking easier. These stories plus a new app helps businesses rent out their empty parking spaces. We'll explain coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching. This is now Jonathan and Ash coming to you from the H&N Digital Center. Let's get right to the latest coronavirus numbers being reported by the state. Health officials say three more patients with COVID-19 have died, bringing Hawaii's official death toll to 215. DOH is also reporting 66 new infections today. 50 cases are on Oahu, 11 in Maui County, three on the Big Island, and two residents were diagnosed out of state. Here's Lieutenant Governor Josh Green with an update on the state's response to the pandemic. So, LG, you know, the concern is you get thousands of people, tens of thousands coming into Hawaii. A lot of people are seen not wearing masks. What is the timeline? We're 12 days in. Should we be seeing an uptick? Should we be concerned? Uh, we should always be mindful and vigilant, but not concerned. We've had 59,000 people come in as visitors in the first 12 days. Uh, we've tested them all. Anyone who didn't get tested went into quarantine. We've also checked their rate of positivity after. We've tested now over 9,000 people, and to my count, we've only had five individuals. So that's one out of 1,800 or so test positive as asymptomatic carriers, far lower than our rate here in the state at baseline. So we've got to do the right thing. We test before. We're doing some random testing after. We're doing lots of testing on the neighbor islands, of course. So we're hopeful that this will work. Uh, we're going to talk to the New York Times today because we're one of the few success stories that's tried this in the country. Man, I hope this lasts. I mean, I can't even tell you. I want to ask you a little bit more about that secondary testing. Is it still required on the Big Island, especially for inner island travelers? Yes, so they're, they're adjusting their program. Kudos to Mayor Kim and to the team that's testing over there, Misco and those other guys. It's mandatory, they're gonna keep that going until the last day I'm told of this month. Then they're gonna to move to day four testing at three different sites across Big Island. Testing at four days out gives you different information. It's all good information. Uh, even when I was in an argument with some people about extra testing, I do respect the fact that that will be of value and I appreciate their input. So that's the Big Island. On Kauai, they're testing three days after. It's optional, but they're getting good results. And on Maui, they're testing at departure and they've been getting 93% of people agree when asked to test on departure. So lots of data to assess our pre-travels program to keep us safe. All right, so specifically for this pre-travel testing program, there were some issues, some people stuck in quarantine waiting for those results, lines at the airport as people got off the planes. Are we still seeing those problems or have some of those resolved? Uh, they're getting better every day, but it's not perfect. I, you know, I really feel terrible when someone has made a good faith effort to get their test, but it came in late, and then they got in that line of six, seven, eight hundred people that had inconclusive results or their test hadn't been uploaded. But we just can't race through it or clear them without uh, being cognizant of the risk. So we're playing them one by one by one and checking them and releasing only people that have met the standard because we want to be safe. No matter what, we can't compromise the more important things, which is our health our economy and our education for our keiki because a few people want to have a vacation and didn't get the test right. And those who did get the test right or are in delay, again, they have my apologies, heartfelt apologies. It's just we have to be so careful. The governor hinted that he's going to have an announcement about Japanese tourists coming back. But what do we know about that, number one? And number two, is that only going to be one way into Hawaii and not the other way, correct? Uh, I think I'm going to leave some of the announcement to the governor, who I, I hope will give you um, a lot of good information today, actually, this afternoon, fingers crossed. But I can tell you, our team, through the Attorney General's Office and Health Department, we've set up 17 or 18 uh, potential testing partners in Japan. We will also 
be very careful about travel from Japan, but they've done a great job containing the virus. And remember, they represent 20% of all of our travelers and 30% of all of our economic activity. So if we can add Japan safely, we can put a lot more people back to work without worrying about spread. So the Gov's got、uh, a few nice announcements up his sleeve today, so we'll stay tuned on that. Lanai residents are under lockdown. It's going to be that way until at least November 11th. We've got new details regarding this situation from Mayor Mike Victorino. With the nearly 1,000、uh, tests that we did on Saturday,、um, uh, you'd be pleasantly surprised the numbers ratio wise are going to be extremely low.、Okay. And so I'm excited about that That's fact. That's great. You know, so, but we're still not out of the woods like I told the people last night at our Zoom meeting. We've got a lot of work to be done, and I want to make sure we come out of this like we did with our other outbreaks at the hospital and at Rosalani and Molokai. We work hard, we get in there, and we try to nip it at the bud before it gets out of hand. I got to tell you, Mayor, that, that is a big relief considering just how things could have been.、Um, well, let, let's talk about this lockdown. And, and I, I think we need to be very specific because there's always people complaining about clarification. So, what is and what is not allowed right now on Lanai? And let me say this, Steve. People will always not understand. They call this office consistency. I'm, I'm really aware of that. No matter how I try to explain it, no matter how you explain it, they still have challenges. But let me try to do the best we can. The stay at home order is、okay. back, the same type of order we had back in April. Basically, we want you to stay at home as much as possible and work from home if you can. We don't want you out and about. You know, we're asking people to not go to parks and other areas where people may be congregating. Essential、um, necessities like going to the grocery store, one person from your household, unless you have、uh, children, elders, or someone of disabilities that need to be cared for and you have to have them with you, you can bring them with you when you go to the store or、uh, your medical doctor's visit or whatever. Doctor's visits or any other essential services are allowed. People of essential working, they have to work. Yes, you, you're allowed to go to work. What we are asking people is to really, if you need to leave the island, I think this is very important. When you leave the island for work and or medical services, when you return, you're going to be put in 14 day quarantine. There's no testing out at this time for Lanai City.、Mm-hmm. Any visitors that come in will go right to 14 day quarantine. Even if you had the pre check, if you're going to Lanai, you're going to be in 14 day quarantine. A house fire in Makiki sent tons of smoke into the air. We got Sammy Salina with new details on this property that's had problems in the past. Residents had a rude awakening on Pensacola Street. Some were woken up by knocks on their doors from other neighbors telling them to get out. Wake up, wake up, wake up, move the truck. That was what the scene looked like around 6 30 this morning. Luckily, no one was transported to the hospital, according to APD. This property has had a troubled past. Back in 2017, we started reporting hoarding complaints here. Then in 2018, there was an effort to clean up the home. But earlier this year, a three alarm blaze broke out here. The fire battalion chief told me that this building was abandoned and that the scene is still under investigation for the cause of the fire. People living here are tired of this problem property. There was a rude awakening due to the fire next door.、Um, right now, We're kind of just displaced and waiting for the word from the officials. This is not the first time. It's the second time within the year. <laughs> I actually have a daughter and two boys, so the hassle of having to like rush out and not be able to get anything is just really devastating and scary. So I hope they can do something about this house next door as soon as possible. Luckily, the Honolulu Fire Department told me that neighbors around that building are able to return to their homes. Sammy Salina, Hawaii News Now. Honolulu police are investigating the death of a man who was seen being driven through Wakiwa while clinging to the hood of a car. It happened yesterday morning. Police say it started as a robbery and somehow ended up with a 73 year old man holding on to a white sedan as the driver sped down Kamehameha Highway. Surveillance cameras captured the incident on video. HPD told us the suspect is in custody, but no other details were released. Never thought that I would see this happen, especially having an elderly man on the hood of the car, you know, pleading for his life, wanting to. It to stop and they kept going. 
The victim was hospitalized in critical condition and later died. Police found the car abandoned. There's a new lawsuit against HPD that claims an officer abused his power by retaliating against a teenager who got into a fight with his son. Rick Desog reports. Back in November 2018, a 15-year-old student at Kalaheo High School was arrested by police officers. One of them was Officer Kirk Uemura. Lawyers for the boy's family say that Officer Uemura's son and their client had gotten into a fight the day before and that Uemura's son had been bullying the boy. His mother says the arrest forced her son to transfer to another school. He had to repeat ninth grade because of what happened to him. He's currently in therapy. Um, he's had, you know, he's been singled out because of this incident. During a news conference, the boy's family's lawyers say that Officer Uemura should not have been involved in a case involving his son and that other officers shouldn't have played a part in it. There were multiple police officers that assisted in the actions that are alleged in the complaint to carry out and cause the arrest of JR and to take him to jail to shackle him. Later that day, the Riveras say they confronted a sergeant at the Kailua police station about their son's arrest. Not only was there a blatant and absurd conflict of interest afoot here, they made an inquiry to the sergeant and asked the sergeant, what gives him the right to do this to our son? And the sergeant points to his badge basically and says, this does. The HPD says it launched an investigation shortly after the incident happened. An HPD internal investigation did conclude that the officer committed misconduct, but the boy's family says they don't know what disciplinary actions were taken. That is literally all we know about HPD's response to this pattern of constitutional violations that JR experienced. We don't know what corrective action was taken. We don't know who that action was taken against. We want not only policy changes, first of all, to address the grossly deficient conflict of interest policy or lack thereof, but also to address the, the underlying policy that we allege of, of HPD condoning this type of behavior. They're also seeking monetary damages. Rick Desog, Hawaii News Now. The Four Seasons Resort at Ko'olina has a new owner. Howard Dykus reports. Hong Kong billionaire Li Xiaoqi and his sons control the Ko'olina Four Seasons. Jeff Stone, the original Ko'olina developer, says he hopes the new owners continue Ko'olina's community-based tradition. Lee has been Jeff Stone's partner since the Ko'olina Marriott reopened as a Four Seasons in 2016. Marriott's Ko'olina Beach Club nearby is open now. Disney Aulani plans a phased reopening starting next month, but we're still waiting for a reopening date for the Four Seasons. Good news for Molokai and Lanai, Hawaiian Airlines says its contractor, Empire Air, will keep doing those Ohana flights to those two islands at least through the middle of January, so the holidays are safe. The FCC approves a grant to reserve some broadband spectrum for Hawaiian homelands. The aim is to enable faster internet in rural parts of the state if they do their own wireless build-out. Thank you, Howard. We have got a lot of weather to talk about. I want to pull up this live picture now. This is Montana, and there's just a huge part of the mainland that is dealing with an Arctic blast. Some places experiencing nearly 40 degrees below the average Yikes. temps. Yeah. Rockies dipped below zero many places, and like you can hear in Montana, get this, the temperature as low as minus 29 degrees. Burr. And it's hard to believe we're actually seeing snow here in parts of the state too, right? That's right, because parts of the state saw thunderstorms and rain earlier. Well, Mauna Kea got some snow, so a light dusting was captured by cameras at the Mauna Kea Weather Center yesterday afternoon, and it's believed to be the first snowfall of the season. Now, forecasters say more snow could be possible in the coming days because temperatures are set to linger there near freezing. And you can see right there, Dylan and Cheta posted that story to our h and Digital platform so you can see the pictures right there. I want to take you outside now. Look at this live picture. Still pretty gloomy across the mm -hmm. city. Let's see how long these dreary conditions will last. Here is our good friend, Guy Hockey. How's it on this Tuesday? The flash flood watch remains posted for Ni'ihau, Kauai, and Oahu. These are the islands expected to see isolated thunderstorms which could spawn some heavy rain that could lead to flooding so if you live in a flood prone area uh, be ready to take quick action now thunderstorms are firing up this morning mainly over the ocean as that cold front drapes a lot of cloud cover all across state it's also pulling up some scattered showers 
almost everywhere. But again, the heavy threat, the biggest threat for heavy rainfall will remain over the west end of the state. And that's when you that's where you see that cluster of uh, thunderstorms this morning. And the winds will be soft and scrambled for the next several days. We might get stronger westerly winds over the next few days, but uh, really the winds will remain mostly under 15 miles an hour. So today's going to be cloudy. We could see some spotty thunderstorms spot, uh, pop up mainly over Kauai and Oahu. Variable winds will lead to some uh, pretty sticky conditions out there and sunset a little earlier tonight at 557. Surf is still looking good this morning. Uh, some slightly overhead sets up in the country, but this swell is on the decline. We could see another boost coming into north and west shores sometime on Friday. So the stormy weather will continue all the way through Friday, easing up as we head into the weekend. Keep it here on Hawaii News Now. We'll have all your severe weather updates. Was that just a scream? Did you hear that? It's what so many people have reported. Just in time for Halloween, the Travel Channel's Nights of Fright is underway. I had a chance to talk to paranormal investigator and star of the Holzer Files, Dave Schrader, about what spine-tingling ghost hover shows are being offered. Who is that? Jonathan, thank you so much for having me on. Dave, you start in the Holzer Files. It airs on Thursday. Tell us who is Dr. Holzer and why are you revisiting his work? Well, Dr. Holzer, we lost 10 years ago, passed away, and uh, he was a, a preeminent paranormal investigator here in the United States. Uh, Austrian, uh, but lived here in the United States and started his career investigating claims of the supernatural. And he took copious handwritten notes, audio recordings, video, and photographic evidence of these investigations. And his family discovered some of these original case files, cases of them, and allowed us to go back in with 21st century technology and a fresh look to try to examine these cases and see if we can get any new answers as to what's happening at these haunted locations. And Dave, I heard there's even a show that takes place at the now famous Tiger King Zoo. Well, you know, you've got, unfortunately, the uh, accidental suicide of one of the employees. There were a few other deaths associated with it. There's also the possibility that there was some chicanery and shenanigans that took place there, and uh, there may be other bodies. So the Ghost Adventures crew, Zach and Aaron and Billy and Jay, go there to try to investigate and follow up, see if there's anything that they're able to document. And they spend a full two-hour episode, which is a long time of filming, to go there and try to uncover what is still to be found in this story. And I think people are gonna really be entertained by this episode quite a bit. Spooky stuff there. <laughs> Speaking of Halloween, we've got a big Halloween costume contest coming up very soon. You only have a few bits of time left to submit your photos of your costume contest to H&N's digital platforms. And then for This Is Now's one year anniversary on Friday, we'll announce those winners but first we have to get to those finalists we'll decide those on wednesday's your deadline to submit we'll post those finalists on thursday to our h and instagram page and then your votes will tell us who those finalists are that we will announce on friday here are some of the pictures we're Shoot. getting in right now i know look at that box costume of the two action heroes there are those iron like man legos i think oh yeah they're like lego cool. but i look homemade and i love me a homemade oh, costume yes. as you've seen i've been showing you my progress which i'm going to save and show our viewers a surprise on friday what i've been up to here's a <laughs> few more pics there aladdin some Disney families there out and about. Ashley, how's your costume coming? It's coming. Oh yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> and speaking of costumes, check this out. Cute, adorable alert. These puppies wore their Halloween costumes while visiting the Georgia Aquarium. And look what they are, they're sharks. Aww. They're baby sharks, basically. Uh, this all went down earlier this month as part of a promotion there at the aquarium. Pretty darn adorable, Ashley. That sure is. What'd you and find? Switching gears here. If you love hard seltzers like Jonathan and I do, well, yep. Bud Light is getting into the holiday spirit with three new festive flavors: apple crisp, peppermint patty, and ginger snap. How do you feel about those? 
Uh, skeptical. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but we'll try them. They're being bundled into an ugly sweater variety pack with cranberry, which is already an existing flavor. The 12 packs are available for a limited time. And get this, Hard Seltzer has been a big success for Bud Light since its launch in January, boosting sales 600% for the quarter. 600%? <laughs> yeah. That is a lot. People are And them. we're accountable for 100 <laughs> I don't know how many of that. But there's so many options yeah. out there. And I bet more and more holiday flavors will come around. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty cool, you guys. So a new smartphone app is helping businesses rent out their parking stalls during off hours. It's called ParkLink, and Jim and Toza tells us how it works. You may have noticed these signs popping up at parking stalls from Waikiki to Kaka'ako. They advertise a new parking app called ParkLink. ParkLink is an app and website that allows people to find a parking spot before they've reached their destination and pay for it before they've arrived. So you have GPS and you have payment on the phone before you get to your parking space. The app is designed so businesses can make extra money off their parking stalls. Most businesses are open from 9 to 5, let's say, and close two days a week. That's approximately 75% of the time that their parking lot is sitting empty that we can generate extra revenue for them. Consignment Center is renting the stalls outside its Kaka'ako storefront. I've got six stalls here. I close and they're available after 6 p.m. Um, until early in the morning. It's really easy for businesses to sign up. All they have to do is go to the ParkLink app, list how many stalls they have, and how much they want to charge. They can rent their stalls hourly, daily, or monthly. ParkLink's also helping businesses like Aloha Bakehouse that need more parking, matching them with stalls they can rent on private roads. Before we only had three spaces, and now with Partnering up with ParkLink, we have seven spaces for customers. Drivers who have the app search for ParkLink stalls in the area they want to go to. Even homeowners can sign up and rent out their private driveway. The goal is to make parking easier for everybody here in Hawaii. ParkLink is just getting started. On Oahu, we're in the process of uploading approximately 450 stalls right now. Parking rates average $1.25 to $1.50 an hour. In the near future, the company plans to pitch its plan to the city. Jim Mendoza, Hawaii News Now. And we want to get to some breaking news now. This is in the Nu'uwanu area. We're told a downed aircraft has been reported. You can see EMS and fire are responding. We're told the pilot is with firefighters now. And this looks like the more uh, less populated area of Nu'uwanu. We have a picture that's just into our newsroom here. All we see in this picture is an EMS unit. I see a fire truck behind there as well and some other HFD vehicle, a truck vehicle in front of it. But this isn't, we're not talking the part of the valley that's heavily populated with buildings or anything. We started getting these reports shortly after we went on air around, I would guess here it was probably around 1205 that we first started mm -hmm. hearing this activity on the scanners and then since then our newsroom has been kicking into high gear trying to figure out exactly what's going on i'm seeing slacks coming in from lynn kawano allison blair and our assignment editor who is monitoring the police scanners and working with their officials to try to figure out exactly what's going on here again just to recap in case you just started to hear us Ashley, what were the exact facts and details again? Right, so we have a downed aircraft in the Nu'uanu area. This is believed to be by the reservoir, so that's why you see that mountain range and the, the valley there. So EMS and fire are on scene, and we're told the pilot is with firefighters now. No word on his condition, but it sounds like he is corresponding with firefighters. And our h and digital team kicking into high gear right now in this breaking news situation. Any moment now, I expect them to send you out a push notification with even more details as we get more images in. We'll post them to our our social media accounts and if news warrants Ashley and I will be back here in the agent and digital center, center to bring you any updates as well also just want to keep in mind we are expecting a big announcement from Governor Ige today in regards to the return of trans-pacific travel to Japan which is a huge deal for our economy I don't have the exact time on that but again our digital team will send out that time as well in an agent and digital notification. So we stay just got the time, Jonathan. That'll be at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. All right, guys, that's going to do it for This Is Now. Stay tuned.